God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are united. They're one in purpose. And they uh, are united. So they want us to also be united. So he pronounced a special blessing upon united prayers or corporate prayers. And then another key uh, script that has to understand why there's so much power in corporate prayer is found in uh, Matthew 18, 19. The word of God says, if two of you shall act, I'm sorry, two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they should act, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. So this shows that when, when we come together united, we have a special set of power that's there for us. And it's important it's agreeing and touching. See, it has to be that the Holy Spirit brings these individuals together in perfect harmony. When the Holy Spirit brings together in perfect harmony, then we can pray, we, we two or three or whatever, we turn and agreeing, and because we're agreeing in the Spirit, we're in harmony, then God the Father is going to answer that prayer because it's the Holy Spirit who's now helping us to come together, giving us utterance to what to say, and now the Holy Spirit is giving us utterance what to say, and our faith kicks in that we are now coming in the name of Jesus, we're coming in His merit, and our love relationship with Jesus, and our love relationship with Jesus, put us in a posture so God the Father can answer that prayer. So yes, uh, you said, is this corporate prayer important? Yes, it is important. Is corporate prayer more powerful than individual prayer? In many instances it is. But we cannot negate the individual prayer either because in order to have the power for the corporate prayer, we have to have an individual prayer right. power going first. Right. Because once we enter into our secret closet and let the Holy Spirit clean us up, then we can come together as corporate prayers and we'll be able to join together and touch degree and be able to uh, experience the blessing God has for us. And it must be that the Holy Spirit brings in a perfect harmony. And through the harmony of the Holy Spirit, we can then pray and we have absolute irresistible power. And that means that prayers, every prayer we utter will be answered because the Holy Spirit has now aligned our desire in, in line with the will of God and those prayers will be answered. So the individual prayer is is like the starting, um, the the fuel for the fire. And once you um, bring together those individuals that are brought together in harmony by the spirit, then the corporate prayer has an even greater effect. And um, we learn that there is power in number. Amen. Amen. So what is the connection between prayer and fasting? Um, is there a connection? Yes. Yes. <laughs> We see from Daniel 9 that there is a connection between yeah. fasting and praying. Oh, yeah. In Daniel 9 and 3, we read that Daniel set his face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And um, I, I, I was reminded when I was reading this, of Jesus Christ, he said, some things come by fasting and praying. And, um, and he was telling this to his disciples when they tried to cast out that spirit. And they couldn't do it, so they, they went running to Jesus and said, well, we tried to, you know, just in paraphrasing, we tried to cast out this spirit and it wouldn't come out. And so Jesus said that some things come by fasting and praying. So there are some things um, that we pray for or that we are dealing with and that comes in our lives. Uh, some things that just will not happen as a result we have to end up fasting and praying about that thing. And what that does, when, when we do that and we connect that, that is showing that we are earnest about what we are doing and what we are seeking. We are uh, uh, denying self, and we, we're just letting God uh, uh, know how sincere we are. And, and, and when I look at Esther, praise the Lord, when, when uh, this thing was going on with them and what uh, Haman was trying to do All to right. them, right. you know, and she uh, went on that fast, and yes. she put everything on a fast, praise the Lord, and they prayed, and, and, and right. some a result Thank you, Lord. King, God turned that thing around. Yes. The, the king, God moved up on that king. Right. And, 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 and he turned that thing around. And this is what God would do. And also with us, this this is so befitting because during this, this whole month, 
God. been praying and, and, and fasting from different hey, things. Hey, praise praise the Lord. Hey, and so hey. there's a positive oh, result God. that is coming in yes, each God. of our lives and individually and corporately. Yes. Praise the Lord. And, and uh, Pastor A really answered this question in, in a, a lot of sense, praise God. And also when you are praying and you're fasting, it, it, it seems like it's more effective that way. Um, and when, when you're reading the word and you're praying and fasting, and, and, and it seems like that you are more in tune that's with the spirit. It. That's it. That's so that's, that's my thought on what is the connection between prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to pray without ceasing? All right. Um, well, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Uh, in everything give thanks for, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, the, the Greek word which we translate as uh, without ceasing actually means uh, a continuous action. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we uh, consider prayer, we should uh, forever be in a mode or add an attitude yes, of prayer. Right. Mm -hmm. In other words, we should always have the line of communication open you, between Lord. us and God. Yes. That doesn't mean that you have to walk around with your head bowed down all day long and try to tear out your, do, your task and duties and, 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 and still, you know, uh, be in prayer, you know, or formalized prayer. But you should always have your heart open to God because yes. uh, uh, what yes. many people don't realize is that prayer is communication. And I don't want to answer the next question uh, beforehand, but prayer is communication. And there's time when we, when we need to speak to God, but we also need to allow him time to speak back to us. Yeah. And, and, and if you have ever had experiences like me, God will speak to you in times when uh, you, you would least expect it. Because you were in an attitude right. of prayer. You yes, had the right. line open. Yes. There should never be yes. uh, any type of activity that you are in that you are not available for right. God to speak to you. Uh, you should Amen. never be in a relationship where you are not available or you're All doing right. something in that relationship where you say, oh, not, not now, God. Not now, God. Uh, I, I'm, I'm deep into this thing now. You know, I'm kind of ashamed of what I'm doing, Lord, but I'm... Uh, yeah, I am now, and I'm doing it, but but we always need to be, hey, hello, I, I see I got some witnesses, but we, we need to make sure that we are always in a prayerful attitude, that means that we are in a state, a state of mind and being where God can commune with us and we with him. That that's going to lead right into our next question. Yeah. Treat prayer and communication with God. Okay, well, it is indeed. Prayer is simply communicating with God by listening and sharing our petition with God through faith. See, we have to be, just like Pastor Mike said, in a mode to hear. So we have to be, you have that continuing. And the way we get there is uh, by asking God through the word. For example, Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O oh God, yes. and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. So as we are communicating with God, we have to ask God to search our hearts and our thoughts and our minds because if we don't open up for God to do that, we can very well be uh, closing the channel and God can't speak to us. There's the communication. you got to go both ways. And we also realize that we have to have faith in order to really actively communicate with God. Right. But I believe he will uh, reward those who diligently seek him. So if we don't believe God is rewarded those who diligently seek him, then it's not communicating. We also have to realize that God tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7, that we are to cast our cares upon him, for he cares for us. And then he lets us know that uh, in Ephesians 3, 12, that in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. And it goes on and on that we can come to God, we can talk to God, we can, and God will talk back to us. We can listen to God 
and he stripped us to see that we're coming for the throne of God with all of our cares, our concerns, our worries, our fears, whatever's going on, we can come to God. We come early in the morning, noon, day, yes. later, at any time. And when we come, God is there. He will hear us. And if we come with the right spirit, with reverend, humility, and, and the spirit of God has brought us uh, in line with, then God would not only hear us, but he would answer our prayers. 